Him Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad and family and companions. Welcome everyone that's with us here virtually and welcome Stad Ubaidullah Evans. It's been beautiful. This is our fifth and final session together and I've been really getting used to it and really happy that I've been able to sit with you for five weeks in a row to benefit and uh, all those that are with us here virtually Alhamdulillah this is the last one of a path to healing with Ubaidullah Evans we spoke about spirituality we spoke about isolation community and now we're tying it all back in with God so welcome everyone Bismillahirrahmanirrahim wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulihi al-kareem you know, as you mentioned, just really getting used to this. And um, who knows, man, we'll see what happens after the break. Maybe we'll resume with some kind of conversational format because uh, I find that more gyms are um, uh, offered when we do things in collaboration, when we do things cooperatively, uh, than just one person lecturing or one person explaining or teaching, et cetera. So I feel like even though I wish we could actually be together in person with other attendees uh, and then, you know, having them ask questions like right there on the spot, there would even be more collective energy. But right. even just me and you, I feel, mashallah, um, um, really comfortable with, with how this has been going. Yeah, I, I can say the same, alhamdulillah. And having Amir here with us has also been an a uh, great experience, <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> and, you know, we're talking about God today, and we always have to submit to God's will. Oh, and wow. on our last day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided <laughs> that no matter what you do, you check or you pre-check or you double-check, <laughs> and something has to go wrong with the Allah microphones. Allah. And that's what Allah, Allah, Allah wills. You Allah. know, we can't do anything about it. But, God, hey, Allah. you know, Allah. you plan Allah. and you plan, but Allah is the best of planners. Hey, Masha, I just want to say quickly, man, I did not mean to, uh, you know, like, omit or not mention Amir, you know what no. I'm saying? He's been instrumental to everything that we've been doing. I was just talking, but he usually is, you know, coordinating. He's checking the sound. He's making sure everything is good. It's usually me and you in terms of the, yeah. the, 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 the kind of the, the exchange and the flow. But I didn't mean to, to fail to acknowledge, you know, no, no, Brother you know. Amir, all of his hard work and brilliance, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, humbly, very yeah. important. Man. It's it's really good to be here with you guys. Uh, but yeah. that being said, you know God the way, has a way of unveiling, manifesting His plan to people, and I think that really hits home with everything mm -hmm. that we've been through. You know, twenty twenty about to come to a conclusion. Yeah, huh? inshallah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, yeah. What's yeah? I, I said this before. I'm gonna say this again. I'm a little scared. Mm. I'm a little scared. I'll be honest. Mm. 2018 was a really hard year for me. Mm. 2019 made 2018 look like child's play. Okay, <laughs> and then 2020 came. And, you know, it made both of them look like. You know, you. I learned a lot. Let's just say that I learned a Day lot. The beach. Yeah, and so. Uh, 2020, we're a few days away uh, from from that, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is really, uh, at least in 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 my perspective, at a at a larger world level, mm. really put the human experience at a test. Outwardly. Mm. No, I definitely see that, man. I think that um, you know, oftentimes. When we're thinking about Allah, and especially when we're trying to talk to people who don't believe in Allah, about Allah, we often start with Allah. We start with God, you know, and of course, uh, God is the subject of this entire debate, right? Some people believe in Allah and some people do not. But if you start, doctor, and this isn't my insight, Dr. Jackson actually shared this with me, you know, let somebody credit me with the insight and think that I'm this intelligent, right? Because I'm not. But he said, you know, you'll find that if you start with the human condition, if you start with the reality of what it means to be human, right, something that we all share, to know that you are a contingent being, to know that you are not absolute, you are not necessary, and that you cannot sustain yourself, you cannot secure yourself. In fact, you live in a world in which microscopic bacteria could kill you. Mm. Right. Your, 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 your entire being is contingent. Once you know that, 
once you realize that, in addition to realizing that you are finite, you are temporary. There was a time when you weren't a thing madhkur, the Quran says. There was a time when you weren't even something mentioned. And there will be a time again that you don't exist in the way that you do now. Once we all, and this is something, this isn't about, you know, your philosophical school. This isn't about your creed. This isn't about your religion. This is just what it means to have the gift and the burden of a human consciousness. Mm. Human beings are unique in that we can see ourselves in time space. You know, there's not a lot of evidence that other animals can do that. Think about what happened before. Think about what's happening after. Human beings actually can do that. Because we can do that, we realize our contingency. We realize our mortality, right? Once you realize that, the question really becomes, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? The correct thing, because it's, it, it, you know, realizing that naturally produces some anxiety. You know, it's, I, I think it's, you know, for a sensible person to think about death and not feel anything, you know, that's, 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 that's unusual, Right. Worship or seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a way of addressing that anxiety. Is it not with the remembrance of God that hearts find rest? This is a year, yes, not everybody has made that connection in 2020 to God, but in terms of us getting in tune with our humanity, what it means to be human, the limitations that humanity um, entails, that humanness entails i think we've all learned about them this year uh, in a very direct and straightforward fashion if we don't allow this year to guide us to allah then we've really uh missed the boat we've really you know we've really missed the trees man you know we've really missed the forest for the trees rather mm. yeah. yeah so limitations i feel that Allah has shown us our limitations uh, as as a as a as a collective, right? All human mm. beings, you know, it doesn't matter mm. where you come from, who you are, whatnot. You know, mm. this this thing has been kind of like this uh, boogeyman that's out to get you, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we've all we've all experienced um, very very personal situations because of it. Mm. Uh, very uh, outward situations in which it manifests to the public as well, mm. right? Uh, but when we talk about a path to healing, mm. which to me that's like this is this is it, right? Mm. Uh, to me, when when they were asking like, what should we call this campaign? I'm like, you know, Talif has been on this path to healing anyways, and then Allah unfolded this whole, you know. Uh, 2020 to be on a path of some kind of healing, mm -hmm. mental, spiritual, mm -hmm. religious, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the end, like you said, how does everyone that is engaging with us right now who can hear this? And, and go into a path to God in a healthy way for healing. Mm -hmm. And I, I find it to be hard for a lot of people. Well, you know, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim it is very difficult, but everybody is given in accordance um, with their level of, 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 of comprehension or apprehension. So some people have gained immensely from 2020 in terms of that path to healing. You know, I guess you could, you could phrase it, uh, they've they've advanced more. Some people, this was really a time to get back to center, mm -hmm. back to family, back to community, mm -hmm. back to spirituality, mm -hmm. some time in isolation. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, this is our fifth series, Back to God. Mm -hmm. Other people um, I've seen are just waiting for this to be over. They're not <laughs> really, and, 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 and most of us are probably somewhere, somewhere in, between, in between, right? You know, they're not, they're not really interested in, okay, this is a moment. Why don't I probe this moment to see what's here? 
you know what you know uh you know sometimes i you know i reflect on just how different things were even a year ago um and i mean like sometimes i get emotional thinking about how much i took for granted just being able to see people um that i love and hug them you know uh things that i wouldn't even shaking hands you know i was watching a video of um uh, you know when i first moved onto my block and my wife was actually filming the kids coming into the new house and my neighbor came up introduced himself and shook his shook my hand you know i was just looking like man i used to shake hands with people now i do some kind of like silly elbow bump or you know or some other kind of you know <laughs> gesture of acknowledgement right. um so i have been looking at things like that even very simple things you know and just thinking subhanallah you know i should have been more grateful you know i mean that was just a sample of things that you know but i mean there're much more significant things than handshakes that you know i failed to give adequate you know yeah, uh, man, thanks I, for I, I, i'm looking now like man I, there's a lesson in that for me right you know what i'm saying i'm looking at how much time i spent abroad how much time i spent outside the home how much time i spent on the road and what i missed you know um and now I'm with my children you know every day on the weekends too and i realize subhanallah you know maybe my focus was somewhat imbalanced when i was you know working outside the home as much as i worked outside the home it also made me more appreciative for my wife and very important work that she's always done and she also works outside the home um so you know some people are trying to take lessons you know from this other people aren't aren't really interested in kind of the lessons of this moment they don't really see the intentionality in this moment you know i think even though you know many of us believe in allah and 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 as an article of faith we believe in qadar we believe in qadar we believe in divine predestination but we don't always think that that means that this moment was preordained mm mm-hmm. This is this is not a glitch in the matrix. Right. This is not like oh man something happened and uh you know Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has to like regain control of the cosmos because this covid thing came from nowhere and then you know and after the vaccine is released then Allah will reestablish his control over his dominion. No 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 no. Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir. Right? Allah is over is omnipotent. Right? His omnipotence is always effective. it is oh you know so this is intentional so i think you know a path to healing entails like slowing down and looking at and looking at this as something god decreed for a purpose not suda not something that occurred arbitrarily not something that you know began in wuhan china and um this is why wet markets are bad and no this is something god wants not saying that at right. the level of the asbab right perhaps all of those things are are relevant right. or perhaps other things right? right but at the metaphysical level this is what allah wanted now we can look at this one of two ways it could be a gift and a healing or it could be a curse you know and a plague and um you know sheikh abdul qadir al jilani you know uh, radiyallahu an you know he famously said you know everything that happens to you is neutral when it happens you know if it was a blessing or a curse based on how you mm-hmm. react to it mm-hmm. if it's something that increases your certainty increases your faith right advances you on a path to healing it was a blessing no matter what happened on the other hand mm-hmm. if it is something that increases your bond mm-hmm. increases your distance from god right weakens your certitude weakens your faith it was a curse no matter what it appeared to be so i think you know um everybody you know everybody is different for some people this is a blessing and for some people it's a curse may be a blessing for all of us <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 and everyone that's know, watching and it's really amazing <laughs> so i i honestly this is going to sound hilarious saying this but I see this as a Jesus moment. Yeah. And I'm serious, I see this as a Jesus moment. And what I mean by that 
is that I mean Christmas is Friday. Huh? Well, you know, well, you know, it, it's befitting because there's, kidding, there's you know, kidding. Christmas is around the corner. Yeah, it's it's kind of befitting. But at the same time, what I mean by that is that Isa, there's a prophetic narration of the Prophet Sallallahu talking about Isa and his companions. And you could correct me at any point. And it was and it was Isa said uh, uh, our prophet Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Who was with his companions and there was a dog, mm -hmm. a dead dog. Mm -hmm. And the foul stench of that carcass of that dog was so strong that the companions with Isa, mm -hmm. right? With Jesus, they couldn't help at a visceral reaction, mm -hmm. but to, it's not because they were looking for something bad, but they couldn't help at a visceral reaction, but to say, what a foul smell. Yeah, sure. What a foul smell. And our prophet, Jesus, mm -hmm. this is what I mean by Jesus moment. It's exactly what you're saying. Um, he looks and he says, what beautiful white teeth he has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What beautiful white teeth he has. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was like, this is 2020 to mm -hmm. me. Yes, yeah, on a visceral, you know, the, the, the visceral reaction to something that limits your mobility uh, the kind of civil unrest due to racial, right. generational racial, you know, racial oppression. The buildup uh, of that you know, with right, the pandemic. You know, with the pandemic, um, you know, I think the visceral uh, reaction to all of that is what a foul stench, <laughs> right? Um, but the prophetic, you know, gaze sees those beautiful white teeth. And that's the silver linings you're talking about the mm -hmm. whole time. And I see many silver linings. For Talif, it had profound silver linings, right? Mm -hmm. We're able to uh, focus on the internal. We're able to restructure. We're able to uh, focus on staffing, focus on programming, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or else we would have been like nonstop focusing on everybody coming in and out of the rooms. Like one example, right? Mm -hmm. um, the silver linings to me are endless. The other thing when you spoke... Uh, you know, you remind me of is the hadith of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu upon him. When Ibn Abbas is riding behind him in, in I forget if it was a camel or a horse, but he's riding behind him like on his own. Right. And he turns around to him and mm -hmm. he says, you know, uh, yeah, Ibn Abbas, oh, oh, ghulam, or oh, boy, oh, mm -hmm. son, right? Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, know that no one can harm you mm -hmm. if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not will it to harm you and no one can benefit you if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if the whole world were to come against you or the whole world were to be for you they can't do anything for you unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed it and I feel like this is that moment as well yeah, this was a moment of you know I, I find now in this moment um, I find that differentiation um, between faith or iman we say in Arabic uh, and tawakkul mm -hmm. and reliance upon God, you know, to believe in God is essentially to believe that God exists, uh, maybe to, to acknowledge God as the source of your being, uh, acknowledge God as that, that uncaused first cause. Mm -hmm. um, you have lots of people that believe that God exists without having any reliance upon God, without having any confidence in God or seeing God as a God that responds to the prayers of, of, of uh, human beings. Uh, you had a, you know, de deism is mm -hmm. like to believe that God exists, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that God is completely unconcerned with, you know, the lives of human beings, right? Um, sometimes this is referred to as the God of the philosophers, right? right? Um, but to what would is different than just Iman. Tawakkul implies, no, I have confidence in God. Not simply that I believe that God has created or that God is even there, but I have confidence in God. And I believe that what God decrees is for my benefit is good for me. And, um, you know, I was talking to a good friend of mine, a brother named Khalil Ismail uh, out of Baltimore. And he was saying, you know, one of the secrets of the Sahaba, may God be pleased with all of them, but the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, is that they attained very high stations in their faith because they were continually putting themselves in positions where all they had was to walk on. Mm. Where even though, and this is the secret, at all times, all you have is to walk on. Right? At all times. Even if you're sitting in your home securely, right. 
with lots of money around you or in good people around you and in good health, you still only have to work with, right? But it's much more difficult in that position to see that all you have is to work with because there is this uh, sense of security that comes through what we think we can control. You know, everything is secure here. Money is good. I'm in good health. Right, my children are with me. My everything is good. Right. On the other hand, when you're in situations where even that apparent security isn't there, you know that the only thing you have is God. And he said the companions, uh, may God be pleased with them. They were always putting themselves in that position so that for them the only reality was Allah. They didn't. Everything else they placed much less stock in. This has been a year of Tawakwa. People watch their stock portfolios <laughs> dry up. Property values fell. Many people lost their jobs. Many people lost the, the, the ability to access those things that help them cope, right? Whether it's going out to the bar, going to the movies, socializing with friends, or to where... 2020 is showing you, especially seeing as though this session is about Allah, it's about God, that's all you have. Why would you make the most significant investment uh, in your life, which is you, your time, and anything else? And that's why I think it's very significant that the Quran refers to the relationship with God, a firm handhold, a firm grasp, one that will not break. Life is all malaha. It does not break. Right? It does not break. On the other hand, anything else upon which you, you, would, you would build your life, you would build your um, you know, existence. Of course, of course, it's, it's fleeting. Of course, it's perishing is the correct term. And so I think that, you know, this was a year in which we could see those perishable things as perishable. Mm. And of course, it's, but the face of your Lord shall remain forever. So I think the path to healing is, is the path directed in that, uh, you, know, you know, directed toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Yeah, that was lovely. I, I can't think of uh, talking about a path to healing uh, without kind of going into, again, what we started out with uh, the beginning, right? Which is talking about that word healing and how it interplays with Allah's name, of a shafi, the mm -hmm. healer, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what do you have uh, in terms of the perspective of a mu'min or a Muslim or even a person who's just seeking God from that perspective? You know, the, the prophet, peace be upon him, he said that... Um, you know, the affair of the believer is all good. It's all good, right? Either he or she is in blessing, they're in a state of ni'mah, uh, in which their, their test is gratitude, to be thankful, not falling into those false senses of security that we were discussing before, and not, you know, crediting yourself with having done something, but rather giving praise to God. Or you're in a state of ibtila, you're in a state of being tested, you know, in which case, um, you know, our good opinion of God dictates that we will see that as a healing, that, you know, we don't even prick our finger on a thorn, mm -hmm. the Prophet, alayhi mm -hmm. salam said, peace be upon him, said, except that in it is a kafara, there's some expiation of some wrongdoing. So any hardship, any difficulty, any sadness, uh, you know, any melancholy that anyone is experiencing now, they have to see that as a part of a process of healing. You know, Ibn Atayullah, he said that, you know, uh, in his Taj al Arus, he said, um, in his, his book entitled The Bridegroom's Crown, he said that, you know, you go to a doctor, right? And sometimes the doctor will prescribe things that don't taste very good or 
are uncomfortable. Yeah, like maybe all the time. But yeah, yeah, yeah you know, maybe he will, will prescribe things that don't taste. Very I've never good seen or, medicine that tastes good. Right, or, or maybe you know something that is uncomfortable, uh, that, or or maybe something that is time consuming or just cumbersome in some way. But this is what is necessary for your healing. So would you neglect to actually take the medicine? No, you take, all of us would take it because we want to be well. We want to be healed. We want to be healthy. We would all take it. And so we would deal with the initial discomfiture. We would deal with the initial um, uncomfortability, right? Produced by the remedy so that we could, you know, um, experience good health. And that is how the believer is to approach life. You know, this is all, the, having a good opinion of God um, suggests all of this is for our benefit. All of it. If you choose to see it that way. And this is why, you know, and I think that sometimes Muslims forget that, you know, I was, I was sitting with a, a therapist once. And, um, you know, I was, I was, you know, the therapist said, you know, perception is reality. Right? Perception is reality. And of course, I'm Muslim, so I thought, no, no, this is, this is just this ultra relativism that, you know, is being promoted by our culture, that whatever you think is, you know, there is truth. I'm kind of on that high horse. No, there is truth. And, you know, one of the, the themes of the Quran is uh, taking false consciousness to task. People that think certain things, but these things are false. But then I remember the hadith of the Prophet Ali. So it was a hadith Qudsi. It's a sacred tradition of the Prophet. I am in the opinion of my servant. So that God, right, the Prophet, peace be upon him, speaking on behalf of God in his own words, is saying that as you perceive God, this is how you will find God. Perception is reality. So if mm -hmm. you perceive, <laughs> you know what I'm that's saying? a great connection. You know, so if you perceive Allah as a healer, you perceive Allah as someone that only gives me obstacles to make me better, make me stronger, display my virtue, show my faith, strengthen my faith, right? Call to my attention that which is important. This is what you will find. But if you see Allah as, you know, uh, you know, God wants to destroy me. God wants to, to uh, divest me of my faith. God wants to humiliate me. God wants to debase me. God wants to lower me. This is also what you will find. So it's, it, it's, it's largely dependent on the lens through which you're looking. And this is why knowing that something like that might be left to chance, you know, depends, you know, some of us are naturally glass half full right. kinds of people. Right. Some of us may be less so. <laughs> Say, if you love God, then follow me. God will love you and he will forgive you of your sins. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he saw God in everything. He saw God in everything. And for those of, I'm not talking about pantheism. I'm not right, saying right, God is right, in right, everything. Right, I'm right. talking about in every act that took place in the dunya, he saw that act as occurring under the providence and prudential action of God. Right? This is this everything that happens, you know, and if you if you understand God to be, um, you know, a source of, of, of overwhelming good in your life. And yes, test. Right. This is this is the way that you will approach life. This is the way that you will approach relationships. This is the way that you'll approach disappointment, which, by the way, does not mean that these things are not still disappointing or that they I'm not saying that you have to pretend the medicine tastes good. Say, oh, man, I, I love uh, amoxicillin. I don't, I don't love amoxicillin. Right? Or, you know, oh, man, it's nothing, there's nothing like, uh, I don't know, right? It's nothing like antibiotics. There's nothing, 
you know, there's nothing more comfortable than having a chiropractor cracking my back in, <laughs> in, in many different places. Um, it, there's nothing feels more stimulating than being poked with all of these needles if you're doing acupuncture or something. No, no, no. I mean, that's painful. That's uncomfortable. I actually initially didn't like that. Um, but I recognize that much good will come from it. Inshallah. That's certainly my prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, the word uh, Shafi, what, what, can we, what can we extract from it? From you us? know, sh Shafa or Shafi, it actually has a dual meaning. Healer and also it comes from something is Shifafi. It's transparent. It's clear. You see? Um, it's see-through, diaphanous, something that, can, you know, that, you can, that you can see through, translucent, right? And I think that uh, the idea there, the connection is that the original state of the human being is healthy, is, is fitra. And that's why the shafi is the one that clears away that thing that is causing mm -hmm. illness, that thing that is causing the malady, and then makes makes you you're clear again. I'm clear. My blockages are clear again, right? I think this should fill us with great hope and right. optimism that in seeking healing, no matter how we grew up or what we went through, we're not actually um, seeking a state that we don't know. We're actually just trying to return to the original clear state in which we were born, right? And yes, over time, some some edness, yani, some filth and some other dead in, yani, some different dirt and some other stuff has become attached to my heart, has become attached to my soul, right? Once I cleanse, once I clean my heart, and I clean my soul, I actually can return to my fitra, my, 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 my original state. So it's always, you know, I, I don't know about you, but um, psychologically, that, 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 that has always meant more to me. You know, if I think, for instance, um, you know, at the beginning of the quarter, when I was a student, when I was in school, and the teacher said, right now, everybody has an A. Right. I remember those things. Right? It's just, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, and this is really just about perception. Right? Right. No one has done anything, right? But right, everybody has an A. All you have to do is preserve your A. Right. As opposed to everybody has a zero. You, you know, build your way up. You have to build your way up. That might, you know, to some people might hear that differently. Right. But when you're, you know, everybody begins clear, healthy, free of defilement, free of dirt, free of you begin clear. And then over time, some of that does attach itself to you. And then you just have to cleanse, right? So this is, this is what we mean by healing. So we're just trying to go back to, 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 to the way that God created us, yeah. to be clear. And that's what, that's what Ashifat is to kind of get back to, to being clear, right? Yeah, you remind me of like uh, of saying, I think that's attributed to Sayyidina Rumi, mm. right? The, uh, people know him as the poet Rumi, right? Mm. But, it's really, it's really, really the scholar, yeah. Yani, scholar, yeah, scholars, of right? Uh, where he's like, "Don't let every rub bother you," basically, mm, right? Yeah, you, you polish with the rub. You're polished with the rub. Uh, you, yeah, you polish with the rub. Al ihtikak, yuchriju sigiat, yeah. You know, they say in Arabic that being rubbed, right? Being rubbed actually brings out, um, you know, uh, those things that you need to work on. Right, it, you know, you, it's not until you're rubbed the wrong way that you really see yourself for who you are, uh, and in seeing yourself for who you are, you perhaps gain perspective on what you need to do to improve and to get better, and to, you know, so that I mean, you know, you're polished with the rub, man. You know, that's I mean, that's and that's that's just a you know, uh, a beautiful metaphor, a beautiful analogy you know, from Rumi, who of course was a wordsmith of the highest caliber mm. that, you know, when you're, when you're making something shiny, you got, you got to rub it. You know, if you're shining shoes or you're, you know, cleaning a piece of jewelry or, um, you know, putting some uh, new finish on a wooden table or you have to rub it to make it clean. You have to rub it to make it shine. So, you know, that's how it goes. 
Yeah. So it, it, when, when I think about that, um, I, I think about that a lot, actually. It always hits me. And then 20, uh, you know, they say hindsight is 2020, right? We've heard that with, we heard that so many times sure, nowadays. Sure. People are, are connecting. Not always, to- though, man. I mean, <laughs> I understand what that saying intends to convey, but uh, some people look back and they still don't get it. Mm. Hindsight is not always 2020. You know, just like, uh, my grandmother used to tell me, a lot of people think that wisdom comes with age, but some young fools just become old fools. Love you, love you, just, just, you know, right? Love you, that's wisdom. Know. Yeah, and that's <laughs> wisdom, right? But, um, you know, when you think, when you think about, um, you know, hindsight being 2020, I mean, what, what the, the statement is, in, you know, intends to convey is that, you know, the challenge is being able to, to have some perspective when looking ahead at things. It's very really easy to go back and say, oh, you know, if I would have only been patient right there, then things would have worked themselves out differently. Or, you know, after the man has lost his wife due to some frivolous argument or some abuse, if only I, it wasn't even that serious. That's what people mean when they say, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But, you know, I've heard people recounting things that took place in their life and they just they're telling themselves the wrong story hmm. and sometimes that prolongs uh sickness illness hmm. right so sometimes hindsight is um uh, you know you know not 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 clear either and this is and this is why Murakaba is very important thinking about the past and Thinking about mistakes that were made and, 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 and how you could have acted differently. It's very important to do that because if you fail to do that, sometimes your nafs is telling you a different story, right? That, ah, oh, you know, if only you'd have stood your ground more firmly. If you, if you, if you were more inflexible, right? If you, if you were, if you, you should have just gave an ultimatum from the first day. This is my way. Look, my way, baby, you can go back to where you can't this would have worked she would have known that you were a man and i'm thinking that's what you got from that <laughs> you know what I'm you know, it's like that's what you thought wow man so much for hindsight being 2020 you know, sometimes it isn't but that's but i know what you mean though. yeah so i i can't think about this year without thinking you know i don't i don't know if people are going to agree with this or not but i'm just being honest with you right now yeah, I can't think about this year and God, mm-hmm. to be honest, without, thank you, mm-hmm. without thinking of the day in which we were all gathered mm-hmm. on the day of Arafah, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, that area, that plain in which is known in, in, in modern day Saudi Arabia, where we come to do Hajj and you know, the Prophet Sallam was known to say there's no hajj that's accepted, right? Unless you have Arafah in it. So like Arafah is hajj, you know, mm-hmm. as the Prophet Sallam <laughs> said. <laughs> Naam. And so um, this day, I mean, not this day, this year kind of reminds me a lot of Alastu bi Rabbikum. It really takes me yeah. back a lot to, am I not your Lord? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at that day, we all had A pluses. Because we all answered it and we said, Bella, yeah, indeed, you're our Lord. I mean, how could you not be our Lord? I mean, you're right here manifest in front of us, right? And then we're brought into this, you know, the exams and into the test. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. When I was, um, I was recently, you know, watching uh, a movie. I know you guys are Muslims, but you don't watch movies. Yes, sometimes. yes. Sometimes. So for love, brother. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one, one character... Um, uh, you know, would blasphemy regularly. You know, just not when I can say regularly. The, the, the movie really only features one day of these characters' lives. But, you know, he was very strident in his, his blasphemy, you know, against God. And you could see uh, that there was just a lot of pain there. Yeah. There was a lot of pain there. And so, you know, uh, I was telling my wife afterward, after we watched the movie, you know, there's a difference in that and just outright disbelief. 
Mm. That person was angry with Allah. You see? But something that you don't think exists can't even make you that angry. You see? That person would, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, you know, something that you think, and that's why, you know, if you, if you really listen to. <laughs> no, that's no, amazing. No, no, Cause he still had belief in God. Yeah, he's though, angry towards he, he, God. He, you know, it, but of course that blasphemy is expressed. You don't exist. I, you ain't real. I don't, you know, you didn't protect my mother. You didn't protect right, me. And, right. You know, I mean, so there's a lot of anger there. Right. But, uh, it, it's, it's a kind of, um, you know, not looking at God through the correct lens. But as the, as the old saying goes, there's a thin line between love and hate. Right. That's a true statement. Right. I've actually found that Me to be too. why. I, who Me said too. that? Was that a, I don't know who said that, but that's true. There's a, there's a very thin line between love and hate. Thin, thin line. That's, if for, some, for something to be so hateful and odious to a person, it has to be real. Something fake couldn't be, could I couldn't? How could you hate it if it's fake, right? It it, it doesn't it doesn't even have uh, it doesn't make enough of a claim on my life for me to hate it, right? So I think that you know some people um, are really angry with Allah, you know, and you listen to a lot of uh, you know atheists, you know they're angry with Allah. They're angry with Allah. And um, that comes back to having a good opinion of God. You know, when they talk about religion, they talk about God, they talk about faith. All I hear, of course, with, you know, a pretense of philosophy or a pretense of biology or a pretense of zoology or a pretense of, you know, uh, you know, ideology, but people that are angry with Allah. And so that's one, that's one thing. Uh, and then you have people that really are looking for God, but God is right in front of them. They're looking. They're looking, but I'm not sure they know where to look, right? And, um, you know, some of them are, 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 are waiting. You know, I, don't, I don't feel anything. But I can't, you know, I can't really bring myself to, to believe anything. And for folks like that, you know, you just, you're forced to, to recognize that faith in God is a gift. You know, it's not given to everybody. You know, although we wish it, it were, it isn't. You know, it's not given to everybody. Mm. You, know, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and you have yet some people that will be found. You know, you have some people that will be found, you know. MashaAllah, you know, uh, a Christian colleague was talking to me about um, religious tolerance, you know, you know, you know yeah. celebrating difference and diversity. And he said to me in a fluent Arabic to this Christian uh, professor, you know, Scott Alexander over at the Catholic Theological Union. He said, um, well, you have to understand the way the law. All of us, our claim is that we're possessed by the truth. God's name is al haq None of us claim to possess the truth because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can't be possessed by anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So even those people that we're talking about now, whether they're agnostic or, or atheist or maybe they belong to different, you know, faith communities, um, you know, we recognize, I think, and this is, you know, this could be my own very optimistic ecumenical view. Um, all of us as human beings are looking for the same thing. We're looking for transcendence. We're all looking for the same thing. Some of us are blessed to actually hear the call of the Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. in that wilderness of trying to sort out human existence. You know, what is, what, you know, what, but we all, we all want the same thing. We all want the same thing, you know, and, uh, you know, we just pray that we can continue being possessed by the truth. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified and exalted is he. Yeah, transcendence. I mean, that's, that's, that's the word right there for me when you said that. Mm -hmm. uh, the prayer, you reminded me of the prayer in that. Because, uh, you know, in our understanding, that's how you transcend. You transcend with your prayer. And I, yeah. I fall short at times with that. Just being real with people, right? Yeah, no, and, we all do. Because, you know, I mean, 
dunya. Dunya actually means uh, nearest. Nearest. A lot of people, dunu is closeness, right? Or even, even lowness, mm -hmm. right? Dunu can mean to be close or it can mean to be low. So the thing about the dunya is that it's, it's, its appeal is in its immediacy. Mm -hmm. See, transcendence, just by virtue of the term, is all about <laughs> it's far reaching. You know, a person that wants transcendence means what? I want to attach myself to something that transcends this earthly realm. Whatever it is, whether it's a, some narrative of heroism, I want to die for my country, or whether it's science or it's humanism, like the, 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 the progress of the human being, or faith, God, right? Or family. It could be we want transcendence that, you know, to really believe that this everything we see, just atoms smashing into each other, you know, just, uh, you know, an elegant dance to nowhere. None of this means anything. None of this is going anywhere. I don't think any, I, I, would, I would say that kind of philosophically, that's called absurdism. That life is just absurd. It has no meaning. I don't even think we could live like that. Now, maybe you'll have some individuals that can live like that. You know, Camus was known for being an absurdist, right? The, the French Algerian philosopher. But no civilization, no society, no people can be built on absurdism. You know, those absurdist individuals, that's a, that's a very, very expedient philosophical view because you can say that. But if, 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 if the society around you really believe that, you would be sitting in your little university classroom teaching. There would be chaos. You understand what I'm saying? So, of course, you, know, you can't build order on the idea that nothing matters. But you have to believe something matters. And that is, you know, that is kind of the, the process through which we want to transcend. There's something that means something, man. There's something that matters. I think we all want that. You know, as the Ummah of the Prophet, we have the blessing of... of uh, of uh, being possessed by the truth. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so, you know, for me, when I was mentioning the, the prayers, because uh, that was given to, as you know, as we know, uh, everyone probably viewing probably knows this, you know, we were given that prayer, mm. that five daily prayer. I'm not talking about, you know, when you, you're sitting on the side of your bed or when you're laying down on your side and you're just remembering God or you... It's, you're asking God for something. I'm talking about the ritual prayer, mm. right? The ritual five uh, times a day prayer that Muslims are prescribed. He had to transcend and ascend mm. just to receive that prayer. task. Yes. He had to transcend to receive the, the vehicle of transcendence. Yeah. But yeah. You know, very, which, very. which is indicative of his station. Very profound. Right away. Very profound. Right? Because, Very profound. <laughs> you know, a prayer in that way was not prescribed yet, yet he mm -hmm. still transcends. And then for us, the only way for us to transcend to God, let's say during all of 2020 or during all of our lives, is through that mm -hmm. prescribed prayer in itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really think about this a lot because, and the reason why I bring it up is because, you know, there's a lot of richness in our tradition. Of course, yeah. A lot. Mm -hmm. You can dive deep. Oh, yeah. You can dive deep. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, you know, you get drowned. You get drowned. You drown. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in the end, right, in the end, and I say this for myself, and I remind myself more than anybody, which is why I was like, man, I'm really short on my prayers sometimes in my life. Mm. And it really bugs me to the core. Because I get excited sometimes with the extra activities that you can do as a Muslim in that deep ocean of richness, right? Sure. And then I forget that no you know, the Prophet transcended to and, 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 and God mentioned, you know, my servant draws near to me with nothing more beloved to me than what I have made an obligation upon her. Exactly. And that's what so I've hard. Made an obligation bro. upon him. Which is, which is, you know, that in and of itself, um, it, it, it forces you to take some of yourself out of it. 
That's you see that's to, to to really submit submit to um, you know what God wants for you. That maybe, and that's why you know it's all. <laughs> You know, uh, we have this the great blessing of this of this dean. You know, whenever somebody says, you know, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Right. We talked about that. <laughs> you, know, you know, the thing, the thing that always uh, it's always and I'm not I'm not belittling that that stance. I think you know that's a great start. You know, a person that says, you know, I, I do re- I, I recognize some kind of metaphysics. I recognize some kind of transcendent reality. That I'm that I'm seeking to to entreat or I'm seeking to align myself with, but I don't trust these religious traditions that claim to represent that that metaphysical truth. It's a good it's a good start. Yeah, point, and you right? said prior that's usually because oh, you know somebody else. I don't trust people. People. I don't trust people. Yeah, which doing. which hit me hard because I'm like, man, that's that, that makes perfect sense. So, right. so I'm not belittling that stance, but it is always interesting when. People say that, and you say, "Well, what mostly does your spirituality consist of? What you know, this 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 path that that you're walking? What are the the times and moments that you feel most spiritual?" And when they tell you, it's all it's indistinguishable from them. You know, I like uh, you know, nature, uh, walks in the park, listening to Brahms or Bach or something like that, or doing my music, doing yoga. Um, it's a self-defined path. And so it's like that which you worship or the transcendence you seek is indistinguishable from who you are. It's some of your nuffs, is in it? It's, it's, it's indistinguishable from you. So it's like, you know, uh, there's, not, there's, there's no submission in it. Maybe there's definitely some awareness in it of this greater reality, but you're not submitting to anything. You're defining everything. With the prayer and the other obligations of faith, you learn this is why our faith is called Islam. You're submitting to something. Maybe I might think the thing, the time that I feel closest to God is in nature, listening to jazz music. Maybe that's how I feel. But God is telling me if you want to approach this is what you do. Yeah. I know what you think. You think a love supreme and sitting on Lake Michigan is going to get you. You feel something, but this isn't about what you feel. That's it. This is about what I'm telling you. Right. This yeah. is about, it's not about what you, maybe you, maybe yeah. you think, you know, uh, acts of community service. I know lots of people like that. You know, when I feel, when I pray, I don't really feel anything, but if I'm down at the shelter, or I'm doing youth work, or I'm, you know, working on some campaign to alleviate human suffering, that's when I feel close to God. But prayers, I, you know, and I get that, and there's certainly a space for that. But what God is saying is, it's not about what you feel when alleviating human suffering or what you feel when volunteering. This is what I'm telling you: submit, submit. And then there's room for you to listen to jazz music and sit on Lake Michigan or help out, you know, um, you know doing different social work, community work, uh, trying to alleviate. Yeah, something. because then at what point, what, what Lord are you really worshiping at that point? Yeah. That's what it comes down to. That's what, that, that, what, that's you, what it what comes you, down what, to. What, what are you I'll, worshiping? You know, I, sh- I should pray, but... I'm gonna. Yeah, that's one. Da, of the, da, 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 da. Yeah, that's one of the biggest. You know, in that, and I, it, this might sound harsh. I find because I've been there before, I've been there before, and I find that what we actually want to worship is some image of ourselves mm-hmm. that we don't feel that we can realize, right? And if there's no chance of realizing that image of who I'd like to see myself as, then why worship? People that feel like I would pray, but I'm not the best Muslim. I would, I would pray, but I'm not really on it. You know, I would pray, but I'm still in this relationship with this girl. I'm right. still in this I would pray, but I'm at the nightclub. I would pray, right. but I go to club. It's right. like, on the one hand, I, I, I can see that You know, a person is like, when I go to God, I want to go to God right. But my thing is, who who said that? Who said, who 
said when you go to God, you got to go to God right. Did God say that? No, God said, if you come to me, uh, you know, a, a handspan, right. I come to you in arms. Right. Right? If you come to me walking, I come to you with speed. Right? The prophet, peace be upon him, said, repent to God in whatever state you are and be as sincere as you can in your repentance. In the moment that you repent, that's submission. Just repent. Maybe it'll last, maybe it won't. And then do it again. And then do it and keep doing it. That's what God wants from you. Now, maybe you want to be this monkish you know, figure that you think about this spiritual guy. <laughs> that, that Maybe that's what you want yeah, to be. Yeah, man, that hits home, man. That you know, maybe that's what home. you want to be. And if you don't think that you can attain that, why, you know, why, why, why even try? But ask yourself, is this about what you want? Or is this about what God wants from you? You know? If it's about what God wants from you, I'm telling you, because the prophet, peace be upon him, told us God wants you to approach him in whatever state you are with everything that you can give as long as you give your best. You know, I tell people, man, this is not about being correct. This is about being sincere. I, you know, there's no way to ensure, you know, to ensure correctness as a servant of God. There's no way even to ensure sincerity, but you're only responsible for being sincere. Just do your best. Do your best. You know, and if you fall, dust yourself off and keep going, man. This is, this is, um, this is what character is all about. You know, and worshiping God is really about having character. You know, and I find that, you know, uh, not to go off on a tangent, but, you know, what we're really lacking in this, this, Time, two things mostly. One is a belief, a real belief in God's mercy, a real belief in Rahmah. We say we believe it, but do we actually? Because if I if I believed in Rahmah, and I think even in this context, the uh, the correct translation for Rahmah would be grace, to believe in the grace of God, then I would have no problem acknowledging my shortcomings. And I wouldn't be trying to change the religion to justify them. I would just say, you know, I try my best, but we all fall short of the glory of God. That's all I got. You know, and, and, and if I meet God, I will throw myself on his mercy. And I have no fear that that will let me down. And then live. Be the best that you can be. Then live. I don't know why that doesn't offer promise to people. The grace of God. That's what I believe in. I believe in the grace of God. I don't know why it's like, no, we want to, all these way out interpretations to justify, like, look, it's wrong. There's a lot that we do that is wrong. I do some things that are wrong. I'm just glad that my Lord is merciful. I'm just glad that my God is full of grace because if he weren't, I would be ruined. I offer that, I can sleep at night knowing that I have integrity. I'm flawed, but I have integrity. I'm flawed, God is full of grace and I have integrity. So it's gonna be okay, you know? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, folks. Inshallah. Because it's all in God's hands. And uh, inshallah, we believe that. You know, I brought up the prayer because it's like, it's something that uh, in, in, in 2020 that I, I was trying to really take a hold of, right? Sometimes we had, and what's, what's funny is I made excuses a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's the thing. That's why it's, it's it's hitting me up right now. Is that I made I made um, excuses like, oh, you know, uh, I'm doing community work right now. You know, so I just gotta mm -hmm. right. Or uh, that's what I mean by like that that you know that that nefsy thing that pops up when it's like time to pray. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna pray later because you know uh, there's this. 
my son really needs me right now to finish this thing for mm-hmm. him, right? Or, 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 or I'm, I'm helping my brother because my brother really needs me for this, that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, uh, for me, that was like a, a real struggle in 2020. Yeah, right? I, I still struggle, man. You know, I, I've, alhamdulillah, I've uh, been practicing Islam or trying to <laughs> for, uh, you know, the better part of 22 years, I think, man. I'm getting up there, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, even now for me, man, you know, stopping what I'm doing and praying is still a challenge because it forces me to center the prayer. And I'm, I'm one of those people that when I get engrossed in something, I'm really, it's very, very hard for me to pull myself away. Yeah, it's really hard for me to start something and it's really hard for me to stop something. I, I, can't, stop until, I can't stop That's, until I can't yeah. stop until I'm satisfied. <laughs> yeah, I can't my stop wife until, thinks I'm crazy about I that because I can't I'm stop. Satisfied. You know, it's, just, it's tripped out. And that's why, you know, a lot of people would read some of those, those old rulings about chest, shitrinj. And they would say, uh, you know, it's haram if a person can't pull themselves away from the game to pray. And um, people say that just that's silly, right? But if you really understand um, how engrossing, right, certain things, certain activities are, you wouldn't find that silly. There are some things that's like, yo, know, you need to pray. It's like, no way. Well, the prayer's about to go out. You're at the end of the movie. No, but no. well, a game. Man, you can't tell me you haven't been there. I've been there, man. Or fight a boxing match I've or something. There, it's like Maghrib is about to go out, or, or you know, it's like, it's like fourth quarter, tie ball game, last possession. Maghrib is going out. What do you do? <laughs> I mean, I've been in that say, situation so like, many times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 and this is why the first tech be Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. Right? It's some tough deal. Allah is greater. Allah is greater than, than, than all of that. You know, even though um, you know, watching this last play is going to bring me some kind of momentary delight. It's just a momentary delight. That which is with Allah, Baqiyat al-Salihat, it remains forever. You know, but sometimes it's hard to see that because this is dunya. It's, it's, about, it's about what's immediate, what's at hand, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you said um, the word um, that caught my attention in there about, um, I'm forgetting right now, but you just mentioned something that really caught me. Can't, no, I can't remember. My train of thought just just just, just been a long me. day, man. I know you come uh, from work. No, nah, I came from work, but it's, it's been a good day. I mean, the, the you know the reason if yeah, folks might be wondering, like you know, we're talking about God, we're talking about how 2020 and how the reality of this year and how a path to healing brought you. And to me, thinking about all this on the way here, I just couldn't get past prayer. Mm-hmm. That's why it's coming up for me. Mm-hmm. And just to be real, like I'm like. I'm expecting this from God. I'm expecting that. I'm, I'm praying this. And uh, why is he not answering my dua? Or why, we, you know, I've, the, my neighbor with the trees is, is still bothering me. I, I did tahajjud that night for, for, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm being real. Like, this is, right? But this, all of it mm. is God. Allah. And to me, it was like, well, Ali, you know, it just goes back to simple things. Foundational things. Prayer, man. Ritual is, um, is something that prepares the soul for encounter with God. You know, I think, uh, you know, in most things, we understand that, you know, uh, to benefit from certain kinds of encounter, you must be prepared. So if, if, if you haven't done, say, the prerequisites uh, of, you know, a certain kind of course, and you go straight into uh, you know one or two. You can't benefit from the class because what you don't you have you didn't you didn't finish one on one, 
right? You don't, you don't know, you don't know, you don't have, you know, that's sometimes it's like people just say, what's the delia? Like, <laughs> no, no, it's like, <laughs> where's the source, brother? Where's the source from? It's what's the like, well, and, and, and I, and yeah. now I want to say something about that. I want to say, cause you know, you laughed, the mayor laughed, you know, I have a smile. I, I love because I've experienced you know, that I have, so I have, many I have, times you know, in my life. A, you know, I have a little bit of a naughty smile on my face, right? You know what I'm saying? First off, I want to say, for literate people, um, many of whom are well-read, um, I, I think it's not an unreasonable expectation to want to understand something in their religion. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, but you do realize that, you know, this legal tradition is a, um, is a, um, a, a very uh, deep um, uh, tradition. It's, it's, so when you say a delil, there's many different kinds of, of delil, right? There's, there's many different epistemological, meaning how we even ascertain something as being truth that goes into formulating a delil, right? You know, so like a singularly transmitted hadith, a hadith transmitted through one chain, you feel the kata, no, you feel the one. Does it give you certainty about what's being said? No, it gives you probability about what's being said. But we do act according. All I'm saying is that there's a, there's a, whole, there's a whole science, science. about yeah. delil. When a person says, what's the delil? You know, it, it's like, well... I mean, there's, there's something to that. Is all I'm saying. You maybe you haven't, and I do. I respect your your, your learning, but maybe you haven't done the, the kind of the requisite study for me to be able to explain my delir for praying with my hands at my side, so that it would make sense to you. I might talk to you about why I do that, and it might sound like baloney to you because you haven't done kind of the requisite study to understand what I'm saying, right? Uh, or what anyone is saying, right? The same thing is true for spiritual states. A lot of people don't realize that. It's kind of like people want this spiritual experience. They want this experience, you know, so they, everybody's burning oud and, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we're dressing yeah. a certain way. Yeah. We're wearing, you know, etter and we're, we want to be in the company of, of good people. All of which is very important. Very good. All of which is very, very important. But if you haven't done the prerequisite, you haven't prepared the soul for that encounter, it'll. You won't, yeah, and you'll all of that, it. I would say, you know, all of that stuff that you mentioned above, do it. Yeah, no, no. It, should, it should lead you back to those prerequisites if, yeah, you, if you're sincere but, about but, it. But, but the fara'it, those are kind of the prereqs. Yes of being able to have this spiritual experience that yeah. people want. Which is, why, which is why I'm mentioning the prayer so much because it just kept dawning on me. It's mm -hmm. like, yo, you want, you want healing. The Prophet showed you the healing during it's in prayer. The prayer. It's in the and prayer. It, and it's almost like, the reason I used uh, that, that long and now very inelegant, cumbersome analogy about the delir, I, I really don't like that. I was thinking about, I don't like it. But where I think it's effective is that the soul has to be prepared to read those spiritual experiences that you want. Yeah, exactly. It's like the soul has to be... It's exactly. Like the, you know, you can see two people and uh, one of them is committed to the prayer. The way that they're able to access those spiritual experiences that we're talking about is completely different than someone who isn't. Maybe they're sitting in the same place and the same thing is happening. But... Their soul is trained through the prayer to kind of to, to know, okay, I know what I'm seeing. And I also have my soul has, I guess, the, the soul's equivalent of a language to even process what I'm saying. Someone that isn't committed to the prayer, it's like, I don't see anything. Yeah, you might see a little bit of it. You, you might see some, some, you might get a glimpse, a little, glimpse, little uh, door open and yeah, shut. But that's what I've seen in my, in my reality. I mean, it just takes me back to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh, who says, if I were to lose my camel saddle, mm -hmm. I would find it in the Quran. Mm, Allahu Akbar. Because it's like, what, 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 what are you talking about? Like, I, I'm reading the Quran. I'm not, there's no camel saddle written in the Quran anywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, Umar, look here. 
under this truck and, and mm -hmm. in this area and the rock mm -hmm. and you're going to find it between these two mountains. But Umar, he's not lying. Mm -hmm. He's giving an, an insight in my perspective, Allah alam, you know, and I've heard this from other scholars, so it's really not my perspective, but uh, an insight mm -hmm. that uh, Sayyidina Umar is saying that through the worship, mm -hmm. through the engagement of Quran, which is the uncreated uh, word of God, right? Which means it has you in there, it has me in there, it has everyone that's ever lived in there as well. Right, that I'm able to find this saddle because I can see through the lens. Even the mundane parts exactly. of my life, I see through the Quran. Exactly. That's that, what I what that that statement of saying no, Omar is saying that look, even the things in my life that are not directly addressed by verses of the Quran, I address them through verses of the Quran. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. Saying? I love that. You know, I mean, just, I haven't applied it, but I understand <laughs> it. You know. Just, you know, yeah. kind of, which and and I think you know to 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 offer some encouragement. I think this is the case with all of us. I mean, think about how different life is when you when your iman is high and when your iman is low. I mean, I, I've I've personally, I'm just saying this for the purpose of instruction. Right. I've been at places where I feel so good that something that otherwise could be agitating to me it doesn't even bother me. Right. It's like, man, I'm I'm I'm. I'm 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 just I'm I'm in a I'm in a place where that doesn't matter, you know. Somebody could say something, like, man. Whatever, man. It just it doesn't matter. God has been too good to me, and I'm like I'm like tasting that goodness. I'm in that goodness to turn around and argue with you about with that. It just and then the iman is low. I might pull a pistol out or so. You know? Yeah, no, and, and then <laughs> and everything becomes agitated. Everything becomes agitated. Everything is agitated. Everything is agitated. It's like, why do you say salam alaikum to me like that, bro? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? What you, what you, what you what, mean? What you mean, salam alaikum? What you mean? Why do you look away when we shook mean, hands? You, you know? should have said salam alaikum and enunciate your <laughs> syllables when you give me. You know, it's kind of like the same thing is happening. It's nothing. It's you are different. You are different. You are all, you know, everything that happens in life, that's the variable. The constant is you. you. <laughs> You're the constant. You know, so prayer is about changing you. Yeah. Right? And then, of course, those variables, those variables, they begin to look different as you, as you change. Right. And you react differently to them. Of course. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and to me, that's like everything there for the healing. Allah that's Allah. that's why it's like you we, Muslims we want to pontificate about mm -hmm. why this with God or how this with God or what does this name mean mm -hmm. and it's like well before we start doing that mm -hmm. can can we please just pray five times a day yeah in the masjid collectively subhanallah we can't even do that right now which is Heartbreak. You know, and when you think about it, 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 could anything be more arrogant? You know, so person that, you know, um, you know, I don't feel anything. You're not doing anything. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, know, you know, it's like, I don't feel nothing. You're not doing anything. You know, because I, I think, and this could be an oversimplification, but you feel uh, on many levels, the things that you do. Think about anything that you do regularly, that you're committed to. Yeah. Oh, you can feel it. Yeah, when I hit that jump shot. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Not... When I hit that jump shot from three-point line, <laughs> yeah, right. when I get that crossover. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. But, you know, you do anything that you're doing on a regular basis that you are habitually committed to. Um, it's always real to you. That's just that's just that's just a part of me. It's real to you. That drive home from work, that's real. it's real to you. Do it. You do it five times a week. It's real. That, that's something that's real. You, I mean, you're not gonna say, man, this is like, I mean, and you'll feel something about it. Either you dread the traffic, you like listening to your audio books, or or you put yourself on autopilot. Or you, you, you know, but, yeah. but to say that, man, I don't, I don't even think about it. Uh, you do this. You do this. Two times a day, five days a week. 
You don't think about it? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's something you're preparing for. You're preparing for it to be over. Maybe when it finishes, you're relieved. But you have some feeling about it because you, you're, you're engaged with it. That's what prayer is, getting engaged with your relationship with Allah. And you'll feel something about it. Um, we're, good, we're good on time. Okay, so how much time do we have left? <laughs> Five minutes? All right, so so uh, the reason why I asked that is because, uh, you know, uh, it reminded me of like the, you know, the quote of, um, I could be butchering this, but it's like the, 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 the person of true insight is like a man or a woman of their time, mm. being timely, mm. right? And um, there's there's two things that I I get from connecting to a healing with God with that with that quote, right? Because it also means you're a person of your time. It means you fully submitted to the reality that you are made for this time. And you're not thinking of the what if. Mm -hmm. What if I was born at the Prophet Sallallahu time? It would have been, what if, you know, I wasn't born in Trumpistan time and, right? Mm -hmm. Like all, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, it allows you to realize like, no, no. God decreed everything for you in its right time, mm -hmm. in its right moment for your ability to actually receive God's message full heartedly so that you can be tested without any injustice. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, we can live at any time. But now. That was the Yasin joint, man. You can't be alive at any time, time but, but now. now. You know, it's like, you know, sometimes, and it's, but it's weird though. I don't want to get too you know, in yeah, the yeah, clouds, yeah. but, you know, uh, nostalgia, you know, this, this, this yearning for, um, this yearning for another time, um, that, that's something that increases in people that are older, right? It just, it's just, it, that, that, that's a net, you know, the, the, the feeling of nostalgia is a naturally occurring thing, you know, and you, and you naturally begin to look at uh, the times of the past as better. Everything is, everything, everything is better. You know, it's, it's, I was telling my daughter, I said, and this, and this actually meant to, to lighten this whole thing up yeah. a little bit, right? Lighten this up a little bit. I was telling my daughter, you know, it's very hard for me to comp compare LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Right? It's very hard for me to compare them because I watch Jordan. It's, it's not hard for me at all. It was just Jordan's better. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. And the reason it's hard to compare them for me is that I watch Jordan as a young child with my eyes full of wonder. Same here. You know, I, you know it's Same like, here. you know, there was, a, there was almost a, a make-believe component to, to the way Michael Jordan played the game. Even though he was playing the same game of basketball that LeBron James plays, but I was different. I watched Jordan. It's like a, you know, my my cousin had the life the the, the life size poster on the right. wall, the McDonald's right. joint with Mike right. with the with the with the, with the measure <laughs> with the measure. Everybody had that. Also. I know <laughs> Mike hold the ball with the measure yeah. joint, the McDonald's joint. You know, uh, you know, we we played Nintendo Jordan versus Bird, and it was there was something magical because my imagination was very open to what was, what was happening. I watch LeBron as a disgruntled adult that feels like the game has been ruined by all of the rule changes and, uh, and the way the players swap the, the you know, teams, swap teams, yeah. the team building, the, team building. The, the super intense commercial expansion of the, the game's popularity. And, you know, so I, wa I watch Jordan like this. And I watch LeBron like this, right? So how, you know, so, so how could I expect to really like judge them fairly when I'm watching LeBron in my thirties and I watch Mike as a, as a, as a kid, it's not, it's just, they, they won't mean the same thing to me. That's what I mean by nostalgia. You know, this idea that everything was better when I was younger and, you know, I think, some of that is naturally there, but you got to fight that sometime, man. You got to fight that and just embrace the present moment 
It's about now. It's about now. It's about now. It's about now. It's not about good old days. I mean, you know, that was one of the things that, um, uh, you know, Trump, Trump actually ran on nostalgia. Make America great again. I never yeah. thought about that before. He ran, he ran on, a, on a white supremacist nostalgia. You know, that's, I mean, that's what, that's, the whole campaign was based on that. Make America. When you say that to people that feel that, you know, the country is changing and they're being displaced or replaced or... Um, um, you know, socially they feel a lot of dislocation and that's nostalgia. We're going to go back to when a man like you would feel secure in his earnings and his sensibilities and his, you know, cultural knowledge and yeah, we got to go back there. You know, uh, that, that, that appeals to, to people for some reason. So the second thing, the second thing that uh, comes to me from from what I was talking about earlier, you know, mentioning about the person of his time, is, and the prayer is because, and, and I just wanted your take on this, and then we'll go to Q&A. Um, mm. The prayer done in a timely, you know, there was a, there was, I don't know how true this is, you know, whatever, I'm going to get flack, I don't know if I'm going to get flack. I'm not saying this is Hadith, I'm not saying that uh, I witnessed that. There, there's an individual who mm. Allah allowed to have a certain type of vision or unveiling right mm -hmm. where he can see when people pray their prayer on time how mm -hmm. the prayer flies out of their body straight to where it needs to go to be recorded mm -hmm. and how a prayer that is done not so timely mm -hmm. is delayed and how so a prayer that's done very very late in its time is almost like crawling up to the sky to be counted for this individual's being. It's really interesting, right? I'm not saying, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, it is what it is. It's part of uh, certain is, understanding. I, you know, I, have, I have something to say about that. Yeah, change. please. But like, he was able to see, like, t being timely mm -hmm. about your prayer, what it does to the individual's deeds or soul, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that healing f for me is almost like, your soul is able to taste being in front of God's presence at all time in a timely fashion when God demands you to be there at that time, right? And so then you become kind of like the individuals that are doing the tawaf, the circumambulation around the Kaaba, but your soul is doing it and being prepared to do it in front of your Lord on the arsh, on his, on, on his footstool, right? And that's why I'm like that, you know, maybe this is a wrong perception, but that's like the ultimate healing for me, mm -hmm. where you know that your, your soul is connected to the, to the arsh in that way because mm -hmm. of your prayers and because of the obligatory acts mm -hmm. that allow you to have an expansiveness in your heart mm -hmm. to actually at all times witness God and mm -hmm. encompass, because God said nothing in this earth can encompass me except the heart of the believer, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you, yeah, you're too deep for me, man. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I'm, just, no, I'm just being real with you, no, man. No, 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 no. I'm just no. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to be facetious. I think <laughs> you just laid out some, 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 you know, maani aminka, you know, some very deep, you know, meanings. You know, I grasped, you know, what I could in my own limited perception. Maybe my soul is not ready. No, no. no look, you think, no, you think, you think I'm prepping you? I'm not no, prepping you, baby. No, no, no. You know. I mean, I, I grasped what someone at, at my level could grasp, you know, from it. Um, and even then, I, I don't think I'm getting it all, but um, there was a few things that, that came to mind that I wanted to say, you know, as we're concluding. Uh, one of them is we have a religious tradition that is actually very solid. It's a very solid tradition. Um, we don't have to be as vigilant as we are about um, disproving superstition. It's like that which comes from our deen is known. We have, you know, mashallah, this religion is preserved. I think there's something um, uncomfortably modern about this idea. Of, that's not really from Islam. That's, that's, it's like, we don't, we don't have to do that. <laughs> it's like, 
if something is being said and is from a person's personal experience, right, try to find significance in it. If it's something that violates or goes against that which has been, you know, related from the, the Prophet in the form of the Quran or his Sunnah, then we don't accept it. We say, okay, that, that goes against something the Prophet said. If it's merely a personal insight, somebody experience something or someone saw something or i don't know why people are so quick to like reject that or it's just, that's not from islam it's like are we just talking about something that a muslim perceived or saw or experienced try to benefit because you know the prophet is the only he's the last messenger of god but people still have it have people still have inspiration and you know god still gives those things to people if somebody shares something that they they experience with you you don't have to accept it as right you can't accept it as like revelation or something like that but you can accept it as something they experience and you can benefit from it if you so choose to so i i really appreciated that reflection about the prayer leaving and, and how it goes up i've never heard the any that doesn't mean this whole lot of stuff I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that was a that was a that was a very profound insight. Um, thinking about you know that the way we pray is reflected in how God receives the prayer, you know, from us with speed or sluggishly or you know crawling, right? Um, the other thing that I took from what you're saying is that. The ultimate source of healing is recognizing our value. And not just any value, but that our real value is that we get to worship Allah. Right. That is the laqad karamna bani Adam. Truly we have ennobled the children of Adam. That that ennoblement is that we get to worship God consciously. And we get to do so with a free will, right? We're not coerced into doing so. We get to do so consciously and with a free will. And when one uh, does that, you've, you've, you've at the very you know, least and perhaps the most, you've placed, you know, everything now is at least in its right place. Now, we, some things may have to be polished. Some things may have to be cleaned. You know, there's, there's still some, some maintenance and some other uh, adjustments that might need to be made, but at least you're properly constituted. That's the beginning of being well. You, you know, it's not like, you know, because if you're not worshiping Allah, basically you, you got your leg up here, you got your ear here, you got your foot is here, you, you're out of order. You, you're worshiping God and you're standing before God. It's like, okay, things are now in order. Now I got this little arrogance thing and I need to polish I got this temper that I need to, you know, I need to work on. I got this selfishness that I need to rid myself of. I got some stuff I got to do, but at least I'm, I'm, you know, I'm stand, in standing before God and, you know, announcing my, my, my servanthood to God. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the path to healing. You know, I might not, perhaps I haven't arrived at the destination. Some things I have to, but I'm on the path. I'm on the path. If I'm not standing before God offering the prayers God has said on my obligation, it's like I'm not even on the right road. I'm I'm on the freeway going the wrong yeah. way. You know, you know, you know, you're driving, you get like on a ramp, it's said wrong way. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's like you see the wrong way. Yeah, you, you know? said on the path, and we say Hidina Sirat and Mustaki. You know, Sirat guide us on that straight, but we're asking for that path of healing. That's what we want, the path. Every prayer. Alhamdulillah. So mashallah, I thought. I thought that was beautiful, man. God bless you. All right. Oh, Amir is upset with us, man. We're always going over. So let's do that Q&A. <laughs> Bismillah. So one of the petitioners says, uh, Shaykh, we'll go to Allah. Love you for the sake of Allah. So that was the first thing that came Alhamdulillah. Out. Whoever, whoever it is, I love them for the sake of Allah more. Um, one of the individuals tuning in asks, what do you advise those who are losing faith in God? Where is the right place to look? Mm. Well, you know, what we've been talking about with 2020 is in themselves, you know, in the horizons, 
and in themselves, mm. right? Um, you know, looking at, you know, every, everything about um, humanity suggests the need for divinity. Hmm. It's amazing, man. Everything, you know, and, and this is why some of the names of, of God that are mentioned in the Quran, they directly relate to humanity. Right. Like a summit, mm -hmm. right? The self subsisting, right? El Qayyum, right? The, the, you know, it's, it's like these are names that, like, this is how God is different than you. The one that I love most is El Mutakabir. You know, I remember talking to Dr. Omar once about the name El Mutakabir. And uh, he said, you know, Mutakabir is a word that's used in Arabic it, but it's, it has a negative connotation if you call someone uh, it means arrogant right. uh, and it's not like proud or arrogant you know it's, it has a negative connotation but when it's used for God it's a, uh, it's a, it's a name of, of, of praise and jalal right? it's a name of majesty because God is rightfully mutakabir right uh, and he said, well, I mean, and I was like, he's rightfully moved. He said, well, imagine it this way. It is not in your nature to exist. God brought you into existence. It is in God's nature to exist. That's how different God is than you. Meaning it's in his nature to exist. Not that something brought God into existence. Or God is exist. Qayyum. Qayyum means existent. He's he, al -awal wal right, right. Yeah. He's the first thing he, he exists. Yeah. He, he exists. Like that's a, that's a part of divinity. So, you know, people that are losing faith, especially in this moment of 2020, thinking about my limitations, thinking about my fears, thinking about my concerns, thinking about my worry thinking about my content, how contingent I am, and then thinking, subhanAllah, that's just my existence. There's an existence above mine that's impervious to all of that. And it's, it's that existence upon which all existence is, is, is built. And that's Aqidah. This is why they say God's existence is what? Dururi. When you study like formal, Necessary. systematic you know, theology, God's existence is necessary. You see, COVID-19 has shown all of us your <laughs> existence <laughs> is mumkin. It's mumkin. It's, yeah. just, it's just possible. It doesn't have to be. Now you know. It doesn't have to be. You're just possible. You're just mumkin. It's possible. God's existence is necessary for you. So especially just the theme of this year, that's a good place to that's a good place to look. Yeah. So uh one of the participants said, Oh start bad law, can you repeat the metaphor on Ash Shafi as the root word meaning translucent? You know, uh Shifafi or you know, Meshfu or Shafi, it means like to to be uh, see-through, right? To be clear, rather. And what I was attempting to say is that health, um, as we understand it, is to be free of illness, to be clear from illness, to not have that there's nothing, there's no illness impeding my good health. So in trying, in, you know, we decided to call this campaign a path to healing. We have to remember, we're just trying to get back to our original state. It's not that, you know, um, you know, the original state is one of unwellness or the original state is one of sickness. And we're trying to remove, um, you know, this, 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 this uh, disease that is naturally there. No, no. The natural state is one of wellness, to be clear, right? To be clear. Everything is clear. There's nothing... Um, there's, there's, there's nothing polluting or diluting or to be clear. Um, and um, the Shafi, the healer, 
is the one that removes whatever is blocking that, 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 that clear, blocking that clarity. Right? And Allah knows best. Another question that we have here or uh, request was I wanted to hear them talk about the healing, about the healing from the hum uh, humiliation of racism. Here's the latest in what continues to be the daily attack on black people. And talk about the healing from the misery Trump created. What's the last part? And? Uh, and from the misery. And talk about the healing from the misery Trump created. The misery Trump created? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's, it's a very deep question. I mean, you can't, you, I mean, mashallah, man, to at least we got we to gotta work on getting some people that are not so smart so we can, we can get out of here. <laughs> um, no, um, you know, I think that, you know, um, mm, first off, I want to, you know, identify with the pain caused by racism. And it's, it's a deeper pain than I think uh, a lot of non-black people or people that have not been racially discriminated against, that they, it's, it's deeper than they could ever realize. You know, because when you talk about, even though um, it's very um, popular to talk about race as a social construct, it's not real. There's no, there's no, bio, there's no, bio, there's no biological reality to race. It's something that is socially uh, affective and socially, you know, very real. And if you're living um, now, one's identity is very closely associated with one's race, mm. you know, in terms of how one sees oneself. And if someone can get you to believe um, through discrimination, through um, you know, your life being circumscribed, where you can go, what you can do, the kind of opportunity you have access to, uh, the kinds of fears that you have of being accosted or killed or, you know, I mean, who knows what. Because of how God made you, it can actually put you in, and we were talking about Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, so I was talking about that movie, it can put you in a position where you're angry at God for making you this way without, without maybe even having the words. It's kind of like, why did, why did, why was this my test? And I think that, um, you know, if a person is not, you know, careful, it, it would be very easy to see um, being black as some kind of curse. Really? If one of if 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 you if you have not been reinforced by the spiritual teaching of Islam or some other spiritual teaching, um, you know that that's a that's a that's a that's a plausible conclusion. You know, man, I, this this is gonna sound funny, man. But it's, you know, I, you know, was when I was sitting with a brother in uh, Yemen, and we were talking about blackness, talking about you know the, the blessing, you know, and the beauty. Um, it's God that, that makes you in the wounds of your mothers as he chooses. And we were saying, you know, it was God's choice. Uh, it, you know, it pleased God to make me black. So I'm pleased to be black. Right. And uh, he said that, you know, a lot of Muslims might see that kind of talk as unnecessary. Like, why, you know, why you even got to talk like that? You know what I mean? You know, it's just, you know, skin color or race. Race is a social construct. Skin color is just completely, you know, incidental. You know, it's just an auto -diana. It's just it's an incidental thing. You know, we shouldn't even get into it like that. And the brother said something, man, it really made me laugh, man. He said, no, actually, as black Americans, we, you know, maybe what you're saying is true biologically. Maybe what you're saying is true even theologically. But We've been through so much that we're at a dialectical point with this thing. Either it's something that we love and we esteem and we're very proud of, or something that we hate and we despise and we're ashamed of. Is that 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 that's what the crucible of America has produced? 
And uh, he said that one day he was at a laundromat in Oakland. <laughs> and he said that uh, he heard maybe one of the deepest things he ever heard in his life from a black man. He said that he said, you know, uh, I was a white man in a former life, but I had to come back and live as a black man because of sins that I committed in that life. <laughs> 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 you, know you know, he said, I was a white man in a former life, but I had to come back and live as a black man because of sins that I committed, you know, in a former life. And, you know, it, it, it sounds crazy, you know, it sounds crazy, but this is what racism to my, to, to the question is point. It can do that to you. That, that statement was not only absurd, it was self-effacing. It was, it was, I mean, it was, but this is the maddening effect of living under the constant bombardment of racism, man. That's, that's a crazy statement, man. My man Hassan told me he heard somebody say that, right? Um, so I think that you know, you have to practice a very intentional kind of self-love that is a wajib for us that for other Muslims, they might feel like, yo, that's, I don't even understand that, man. Why, why, why somebody got to do that? I just told you, man, said he had to come back and live as a black man because of sins he committed in a former life. That's why it's a, you know, it's for us that that's wajib. It's like, no, no, that kind of affirmation, that kind of self-love, um, being in spaces where we can be affirmed in that way, man, that's, that's, that we, that's necessary, man, because we've been dealing with, um, you know, you know, it's been heavy. It's been heavy. So being in a place where, you know, you can, um, you know, appreciate yourself, love yourself, and, and doing that with, um, uh, you know, the spiritual foundations, like what we were talking about, Allah made me this way. Look, you know, learning your history, being interested in that history. Um, uh, and then also reframing the way that you see your present. You know, I think it's very easy. I mean, dude, how you look at black life uh, contemporarily is all about what you're comparing it to. You know, it's very easy to look at, you know, some of the social maladies and dysfunctions and other things that black people go through. Some of which, you know, there is some lapses. There are some lapses of moral responsibility. I'm not, I'm not ducking that. I'm not, right? But if you look, when the fitna to ashed to me, no, fitna, normalized oppression is worse than slaughter. It's like the great civil rights activist, activist Benjamin E. Mays said, you know, the amazing thing about black people is that they're still here. People talking about, what about the auto wedlock birth rate? What about the uh, drug uh, situation? What about the uh, absentee fathers? What about, no, those are all very significant issues that we're going to have to address on a personal level of moral accountability. But given what this community has gone through, the way this community has been beleaguered in the past, Hey Amen. The fact that we're still here is a sign of the miraculous power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This thing is real. I mean, the genocide that was the psychic death that was intended for black communities, man, that's, that's not nothing to play with. That's not nothing. That's not, that's not something that's a joke. That, I mean, that, that's devastating. It, it, could, it might take, in fact, I'm going to go out on record. This is being recorded. I'm going to say this on record. The, that kind of generational, normalized and systematized oppression is unprecedented. So when you see black people attaining a, a state of wellness, you'll know, okay, that's how long it takes. If it takes 700 years, then you'll know, okay, that's, it takes 700 years to come back from that. If it takes 2,000 years, you know, it takes two. That's the reason why, you know, the, 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 the reason, you know, why there's no mistakes in the Quran. You know why? Because because Arabic grammar had no standardization before the Quran. Hmm. You see? 
there was no there was no standardization of every grammar before the Quran. So the Quran can't have a mistake. <laughs> you see? So in the same way, it's like this has never been done to any other community. So when that community overcomes those demons, that community overcomes depression. Now humanity goes. When something like that happens to you, make it take 800 years. It could take two. You'll know. So, you know, right now we're working through our stuff, you know, and um, we, we, we should be at one and the same time willing to say that, um, you know, uh, we, have, we, have, we have work that we need to do. We have work that we need to do, but no matter where we are in the process of doing that work, we love ourselves, man. And we're proud of who we are. We're proud of where we are. We got a long way to go, but we're proud of where we are because we know where to put us, you know? And, um, you know, that's, that's usually how I address that, you know? A follow-up question from that. One person asks, do you mean black Muslims in the United States need to approach Islam in a different way to transcend, transcend and, uh, the distraction of racism? I'm saying that, the, the, you know, there might be um, certain things that are necessary for us that other communities will see as unnecessary. You know, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, um, you know, uh, how can I say this? You know, the Prophet وسلم, never had to intentionally engage in building up the self-confidence of the Sahaba in them being Arab because they didn't have, that wasn't an issue. They, they were actually, in fact, he had to do the opposite. They had so much pride over Nasab. There was so much pride, you know, like they were so imbalanced in that they were so proud of their tribe, so proud of their families that he actually had to bring them to a place of balance by saying, look, none of that means anything with Allah. You know, unless, unless you have knowledge, right? We're actually, as black people, at the other end of that spectrum that, you know, man, we have been devalued. We've been told that we're ugly, we're unintelligent, inarticulate, lazy, indolent. You know, there's a lot of like kind of building up that must occur just for us to get to a place of equilibrium, just for us to get to a place of balance. I'm finished uh, expecting other Muslim communities to understand that. They might not get that. They might say, well, why, why are we talking about this? Let's just focus on Dean. Why, why, why we got to talk about this stuff? And I get, and I, I understand what they, because, you know, it's almost like, <laughs> you know, it's almost like, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I saw some brothers once and they were talking about, you know, going off in the path of Allah and leaving the dunya. One of them was a physician. It made a lot of sense. One of them was homeless. It's different. You know, it's like, for you, leaving the dunya is about getting to a place of prophetic balance because you're drowning in dunya. For me, finding a job, being able to support my family, building some wealth, acquiring some property, that's what I need to do to get to a prophetic balance. Mm -hmm. You might not get that. You might look at me and say, why, why, all, the, why all this focus on the dunya? Where we're at two different places. You don't get it. You know, and I think for a long time we've tried to find ourselves in some of those discourses of other communities. And then we wonder, why isn't this working for me? Why is why hasn't this been effective for me? We're, we're just at a different place. Yeah, yeah, the approach has got to be different. So yeah, I, I do think so. Which does not mean Right, just maybe to make this the last one because we run out of time. You know, this does not mean that you know we can do things that are like haram and the delil is well, you know, it's a black thing, guy. You know what I'm saying? No, I, you know, <laughs> you know, I, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know, um, you know, in our uh, pedagogy, how we teach, and um, 
the way we assemble and you know the, 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 it, it might have some some features not anything central to the usul of the deen right um but it, it might have some features that uh um other communities might might not find very relevant Uh, one of the resistors said, it sounds like some all lives matter nonsense. If we have a Muslim, if we as Muslims can't understand the need for equality practice, uh, enjoy or love. That's, say, 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 say. They said, let me repeat it again. Is it a question? No, it's a comment. It's a comment. Right. Yeah. It's okay. I'm, I'm interested in this stuff. It said, um, sounds like some all lives matter nonsense. If we, if we as Muslims can't understand the need for equality, practice, enjoy, and self love. I don't get it. Oh, Do it. If you can. I, I, I th maybe they're agreeing with me. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they disagree with me. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, she's saying that uh, black people. She said yes. Yeah, agreement. That's, that's, she's yeah, agreeing yeah, with yeah, you. That's, yeah, that's yeah. What I, that's what. That's what, yeah. that's what I thought. But even if they wanted to disagree, I mean, anybody who wants to disagree with me, they can. I mean, they'd be wrong, but they can if they want to. <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And I, and, no, and and I think that um, you know what 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 you know she and I both probably understand is that, and you had you know you had to be there, man. You know you have to. You know this is a reality that. Um, you know, uh, you know, like Kanye said, I wish I can give you this feeling. <laughs> you know I wish I could give you this feeling, but you don't, but you don't, but you know, it, 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 it's, it's just very unique. You know, it's just very unique. Maybe that's a good place to stop, inshallah. No more questions? MashaAllah. So, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصل الحق وتواصل الصبر آمين يا رب العالمين. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all for being with us on these five series of uh, Path to Healing. You can catch them all on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, and inshallah, 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 may we benefit from them. I know I've benefited immensely and uh, i'm honored to have shared the stage with Ubaid. inshallah it won't be the last time but with that being said don't forget to support Talif. inshallah my name is ali dia we got Ubaid Allah evans here jazakallah khair god bless you all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh